Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you could join me today. Thank you for being here. I hope everybody's doing well. I hope you're enjoying the warmer temperatures. We certainly are in the DC area. It's absolutely gorgeous around here, a little on the warm side, but it's very beautiful. One of my favorite things to do is to go hiking along the bike trails around here. And I absolutely love it because I see all kinds of wildlife. And if you like dragonflies, the best thing to do is to go to some place where it's wet, some kind of stream, a brook, or some kind of wetland. I remember back when I worked at the Pentagon, I used to see them flying around the parking lot, the Pentagon parking lot, and I used to wonder why. And then it dawned on me, there's a little lagoon right by uh, the Pentagon parking lot. It's actually part of the Boundary Channel, which comes off the Potomac River. And I used to see dragonflies flying around those cars all the time in the summertime. It was really funny. And they were very big too. But anyway guys, if you like that dragonfly necklace that you saw in the introduction, then you're going to love this tutorial because we're going to learn how to make that necklace. And we're going to be using the beads from Sam's Bead Box for the month of May. The name of the box is Boho Travels. Now if you're not familiar with Sam's Bead Box, I'll leave a link down below so you can go check it out. But anyway guys, the May box was absolutely gorgeous. And I did make a necklace a couple of weeks ago, but I couldn't resist making another one because there were some really gorgeous beads that I wanted to use in that box. Now if you don't have the box or you've used up your beads, I'll leave a list of all the materials down below in the description section of this video. So if you don't have the beads, you can go find them on the internet or go into your stash and see if you can find similar items. But anyway guys, I'm very excited to show you how to make this necklace. I've got a specific style that I always seem to gravitate towards, so it may seem like this necklace looks very similar to other ones that I've made. But what makes this necklace different is that it's an asymmetrical design. And I don't know about you, but I always struggle with asymmetrical designs for some reason. I really have a hard time with that because I like things to be balanced. Now this necklace is asymmetrical, but it's still balanced. But you'll see later on how I play with the colors. I used one color on one side of the necklace and I used another color and different kinds of beads on the other side of the necklace. So anyway, it's a little bit different, so hopefully you'll like it. Now before we begin, let me remind you to please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already, because it really does help my channel and it helps me as a content creator to stay motivated to create more videos for you. And if you do subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can be notified the next time I release a video. Another thing that I'd really appreciate it is if you would give me a like and leave a comment down below. Let me know if you like the necklace or any other kind of feedback you want to leave down there. I'd really appreciate it. So anyway guys, without any further ado, let's go ahead and turn the camera around and we'll get started. And here's Sam's bead box for the month of May. As you can see, the name of the box is Boho Travels. Let's go ahead and get the beads. I put the packets that we're going to be using on top to make it easier for me to pick out. So what inspired the necklace was this gorgeous Czech glass table cut dragonfly bead that you can see right there. Let me pull it out. And here it is. It's so pretty. It has a copper wash as you can see, but the base color is a very nice earth tone and it has a Picasso finish on the outer edge. So anyway guys, this is what inspired the necklace. The next thing that I was attracted to were these beautiful Czech glass pillow beads. The description says the color is etched stone Picasso and I just love these beads when I first saw them. Look how rustic and gorgeous they are. I love the color and I love that they're irregular and they feel so nice for some reason to me. But I think what I like the most is the finish. It's a very rustic matte finish and the size is really nice as well. They measure six by eight millimeters in size. We're also going to use these hexagon shaped beads. The color is Blue River Mix and they measure 5.5 millimeters in dimension. The other thing I couldn't resist were these beautiful table cut beads. It's actually a mix and there are two different kinds of beads in this mix. Look at these gorgeous beads guys. Aren't these beautiful? I love the color. The color of this mix is Canyon Creek and you can see why the blue beads remind me of water and these oval shaped beads remind me of rocks. So anyway, I love these and I think the ovals measure six by 10 millimeters in dimension and the rectangular ones measure eight by 12 millimeters in dimension. And the other beads that I adored were these beautiful Czech glass Preciosa peanut beads. I did use quite a few of these in a necklace, but I still have some left that I can use in this necklace. As you can see, they're two-tone, they're copper and clear. They measure two by four millimeters in dimension. Let me pull them out. Look how cute these are. I love these beads. They make great spacer beads. Another thing I wanted to use was one of these owl charms or owl beads. These are really cute. But I'm only going to use one of them, I think. I want to use this one right here. It has the same exact color as the etched beads, and I think it'll look really nice in one of the dangles that I'm going to be making. 
it measures 6 by 14 millimeters in dimension. There are two other items I want to use. I'd like to use one of these table cut oval beads. I'm not sure if I'll use one or a couple. Let me show you what they look like. So here's what they look like and the color is lavender silk clear mix. They measure 12 by 14 millimeters in dimension. And like I said, I'm not sure if I'll use one or two, but let me just put them aside. And there's one other item here that I'd like to use. I'd like to use some of these beautiful purple colored beads. These are the Czech Glass Fire Polish Faceted Rounds. The color is Blue Stone Purple Luster. They measure 6.5 millimeters in dimension. And this is what they look like. I think these are so pretty. And that's it from this box. Now I do want to use one item from this match box. The name of this box is My Favorite Things, as you can see. Let me show you which beads I'd like to use. I'd like to use these here. These are so pretty. These are called Czech Glass Saucer Beads. The color is Bronze Luster. Even though these have a bronze coating on top, the actual glass is a little bit on the purplish side. So I think these will go well with the table cut oval beads, as well as the 6.5 millimeter fire polished rounds. These measure two by five millimeters in dimension. And by the way, guys, if you don't have these beads left, you can use some of those Preciosa peanut beads instead of these. And that's it from this box. I want to also use some of these spacer beads. Let me pull them out and show you. These are called charm hanger beads and you can find them on Etsy. You can find them on Amazon. If you do a Google search, you can put in charm hanger or you can put in spacer bead with loop. They're not that difficult to find. I know the last time I used these, it seemed like some of the folks got a little bit uh, frustrated because I used them. Uh, obviously these did not come in the box, but I like to use these because they do add a little bit of a metal element. They give the same effect as metal spacer beads. But what's so neat about these is that they have the loop. So not only are they metal spacer beads, but they allow you to hang dangles from the loop. And normally I would make my own, but uh, since I'm going to be using beading wire today, I don't want to use anything that's going to cause the beading wire to slide through a gap. In other words, whatever I thread the beading wire through needs to be perfectly closed like these are. So for example, you don't want to use jump rings because the jump ring has a cut and the beading wire could very easily slide through the cut if you don't close it properly. So anyway, I've used these before in the past. And like I said, if you put in those uh, search terms that I gave you, you should be able to find them. I know Etsy has a whole bunch of them. The first thing we're going to do is build the charm. So I have everything laid out as you can see. I have my five hanger beads and I have the focal and one of the L beads. I have two of the etched beads, one of the table cut beads right here, and then these hexagon shaped beads and some peanut beads. I'm going to be building five different dangles and obviously I know what I'm doing. I've already experimented a little bit with this. And here I have five head pins and these are flat head pins. I'm going to be using some 22 gauge wire. As you can see, it's in an antique copper color and it's tarnish resistant as you can see. So we're going to start by cutting ourselves some wire. Let me go ahead and straighten it out a little bit. And I think what I'm going to do is prepare these small beads first. So the pieces aren't going to be too long for that. I want to say maybe one and three quarter inches because we are going to do some wrap loops. So you want to make sure that you have plenty of wire. If you're a beginner, you definitely need at least one and three quarter inch pieces. If you're advanced, you might be able to get away with less. To make sure that you have plenty of wire, I would say start with two inches, guys, if you're new. There's nothing more frustrating than trying to do wrap loops with not enough wire. So let me show you what we're going to do. You're going to take one of the pieces of wire and you're going to grab it at the top like this. And usually what I do is I envision where my bead is going to be. And then I place my pliers right above where I think the bead is going to be, if that makes any sense. And I'm going to switch to this portion of my wire and I'm going to wrap the tail around the nose, just like that. Flip the pliers around and continue to wrap to the back. So now we have this, remove the pliers. And now we're going to do some wraps and I like to grab the loop with a set of skinny pliers and these are actually crimping pliers but I love the tips because they're very skinny and it's easy to grab. And now with another set of pliers I'm going to grab the tail and I'm going to do a couple of wraps. And 
remove the pliers, snip off the excess wire, and now you definitely want to tuck that little end in. Sometimes it's easier if you grab the loop like this with your pliers and then with another set come in here and tuck it in. So this is what you should have. Now we're going to thread the bead on just like that. And now we're going to grab the wire at the top of the bead with the round nose pliers. Line up the bottom loop, kink the wire away from you like this. Switch to this portion of the wire. Wrap the tail around the nose of the pliers like this. Flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back. Like this. Remove the pliers. And now we want to attach it to one of the charm hangers here. But before we do, let me just open up this loop a little bit to make it easier. And let's go ahead and slip the loop of the charm hanger into the component that I just made. Close up my loop. And now we have to create some wraps. So I'm going to grab the loop with my skinny pliers, just like that. And now I'm going to do a couple of wraps. Remove the pliers, and now let me cut off the excess, tuck in the little end, and this is what we have so far. I think I'm going to connect another hexagon bead to this bead, so let me just do that again. Once again, I'm grabbing the wire right above where I think the bead is going to be, kink it, switch, Wrap the tail around my nose of my pliers, flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back. Grab the loop, grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. Cut off the excess. Tuck in the little end. And now let's thread one of these hexagon beads on. Grab the wire at the top of the bead, line up the bottom loop, kink it, switch to this portion. Wrap the tail around the pliers, flip the pliers around, and continue to wrap to the back. Remove the pliers, and now I'm going to connect it to this loop here. And now I'm going to grab the loop with my skinny pliers, grab the tail, and do a couple of wraps. Cut off the excess, tuck in the little end. So now we have this. And now I'm going to do one more, but I'm going to use a head pin for this last one. So let me go ahead and thread one of the beads onto my head pin, just like that. Grab the wire at the top of the bead, kink it. Switch to this portion of the head pin. Wrap the tail around the nose of the pliers. Flip the pliers around. Continue to wrap to the back. Remove my pliers. Let me open up this loop a little bit. And now we're going to slide it into this loop here. Let me close up my loop again. And now I'm going to grab it with my skinny pliers and with my other pliers I'm going to grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. 
and this wire is actually pretty tough compared to the 22 gauge that I've been using. You can do as many wraps as you want to. You just want to make sure you cover up any wire that you see. And now let me cut off the excess. And now tuck in the little end. So this is what we have so far. And now let's go ahead and build the next one. I'm going to start with one of these hexagon beads again. So let me go ahead and prepare it just like I prepared this first one. So here it is, as you can see, I've wrapped one end and the other end is open. Let me go ahead and open up this loop a little bit. And I'm going to slide the hanger bead into this open loop. And now let me grab the loop with my skinny pliers and grab the tail with another set and do some wraps. Snip off the excess. And now let me tuck in the little end. I think what I'm going to do now is hang one of these etched beads below it. So let me put that one on a head pin. And actually I think I'm going to put one of these peanut beads first. So it'll be at the bottom of the head pin. And then the etched bead. And then a peanut bead. Like that. Let me go ahead and create a loop. And now I'm going to slide the uh, closed loop of this dangle into the open loop of this component that I just built. Let me grab the loop with my skinny pliers, grab the tail and do a couple of wraps and now cut off the excess and now I'm going to tuck in the little end. So now we have one that's a little bit shorter as you can see. I'm trying to be a little bit conservative with these peanut beads because I don't have a lot left. But here's a few more and I think I'm going to need another one of these etch beads. Let me go ahead and build the center focal. Now for this bead I will need a longer piece of wire. So I'm going to cut myself a two and a half inch piece. Let me straighten it out a little bit. So once again you want to estimate where the bead is going to go and that's where you want to place your pliers. Kink it. And now I'm going to do a loop just like I've been doing. A wrap loop. I'm going to do some wraps at this end. Like I said before, it's a lot easier to tuck the little end in if you hold it with your pliers like this. And now let me go ahead and thread the bead on. I want this loop open so that I can slide the uh, charm hanger onto it. So let me go ahead and grab at the top of this bead like this. Line up the bottom loop. Kink it. Let me open up the loop a little bit. Slide the charm hanger into the loop. And now I'm going to grab the loop with some skinny pliers. And I'm going to do some wraps. Snip off the excess, tuck in the little end. So here's the dragonfly focal bead. And now below this I think I'm going to attach this table cut bead. So let me go ahead and grab one of these pieces of wire. And I'm going to create a loop like I've been doing.
cut off the excess. Tuck in the little end. And now let's thread the bead on. Grab the wire at the top of the bead, line up the bottom loop, kink it, form a loop, and before we do the wraps we need to attach it to the bottom of this dragonfly bead, like this. Grab the loop with your skinny pliers, grab the tail, and do a couple of wraps. And now snip off the excess, tuck in the little end. So this is what we have so far. I think I'm going to hang one of these edge beads on the bottom and that's going to be on a head pin. So let's go ahead and thread it on just like that. It seems like a waste of a head pin but these are the only copper ones I had so unfortunately I'm going to have to sacrifice them. They're nice and long. It's really difficult to find head pins that are this long. It's not really that they're difficult to find, it's just that they're expensive. So now I'm going to slide the closed loop of this pendant into the open loop, just like that. Grab it with some skinny pliers. And now with another set I'm going to make some wraps. And now I'm going to cut off the excess. Tuck the little end in. And I think it looks really nice with these other two. So the next one's going to look like this, I think. I'm going to use this owl charm or this owl bead and two of these hexagon beads like that. And on this one, I'm going to use one of these edge beads, some of these peanut beads and a hexagon bead. I think that's going to look really nice. Let me remove these beads. I don't need these. So let me go ahead and prepare this hexagon bead first. So now we have this dangle. So as you can see, even though they're not identical dangles, it's still very balanced. We have the shorter ones here and then they're graduating in size as you can see. Let me move them down here so I can get the rest of the beads. So here are the rest of the beads and now we're going to work on the strands as well as the focal part of the necklace. Now most people use beading boards to assemble bead patterns, but I'm going to use something a little different. I'm going to use these rods. These are called magic rods and I carry these in my Etsy store and I use these to assemble bead patterns. I like to use them because they're made out of steel and what I like about them is that you can put all kinds of beads on these, all kinds of shapes, all kinds of sizes and they're very useful because they have these stoppers on the ends which allows you to bring the beads up close to each other which is something that you can't do on a beading board and that's critical when you're using these kinds of beads or any kind of seed bead and obviously we have all other kinds of shapes here. We have the table cut beads, we have these etched uh, pillow shaped beads, we have the disc beads and all of these beads would be almost impossible to assemble on a beading board and get accurate measurements. It's not that you can't do it, it's just that you can't get an accurate measurement whereas if you use these rods you can definitely get an accurate measurement. Now before I came up with these rods I used to use beading wire, that's your other option. If you want to use a scrap piece of beading wire and assemble your bead patterns on the scrap piece before assembling it on the actual beading wire that you're going to be using that would be okay as well. So anyway guys you have lots of options you don't have to use rods obviously you can use your beading board you can use a scrap piece of beading wire it's completely up to you. I'm going to be using these magic rods and I'll go ahead and leave a link down below to my Etsy store if you're interested in these they're called magic rods. 
So let's go ahead and assemble the bottom portion of the necklace. I'm going to remove the stopper. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with one of these disc beads. I'm only going to have the disc beads at the bottom and then one of these beautiful purple faceted beads. Another disc bead. And then a charm or a dangle. And now let me go ahead and load another disc bead. And another purple bead. See what that looks like. I like that. Let me load another disc bead and a charm and another disc bead and another purple bead. Obviously I've already played around with these beads so I kind of know what I'm doing if you're wondering. I played around with the spacing earlier on and trust me guys I had a couple of uh, renditions of this necklace before I came up with the final design. It was not easy. That's one of the reasons I don't like to do designing on the fly. I like to take my time and there are times when I change my design quite a few times before I come up with the final piece. So that looks pretty good so far. And now let me put this main dangle, the main pendant, another disc bead, and another purple bead. another disc bead and that's another reason I like the rods because they're made out of steel you can load the beads on pretty quickly versus using a piece of beading wire which is a little bit flimsy. Let's go ahead and load the next dangle and another disc bead, another purple bead and another disc bead the last dangle, another disc bead, another purple bead, and let's finish with a disc bead at the end. So this is what we have so far. I really like that. Let me go ahead and put a stopper on the end to secure the beads and I'll bring the other one in and let me put it down and show you what we have so far. Let me move these up a little bit so you can see a little bit better. As you can see the beads are not symmetrical but they're balanced and this is exactly what I was looking for. I wanted something to look a little on the organic side but still have it be balanced and the colors are relatively evenly distributed as you can see. So I'm pretty happy with this but I think what I'm going to do is add one of these Preciosa peanut beads on each end. Let me go ahead and do that now. And the reason I'm adding one of these is because I'm going to be using these on the strands so I want the whole thing to tie in. Let me put the stopper on this side and I'll flip it over and add a Preciosa bead on this end and put my stopper on. So this is what it looks like now and I really like that. So now that we've completed the bottom portion of the necklace, we're going to work on the strands. Let me move this off to the side. I have another rod here. And I was thinking about using these beads on one side and these beads on the other side of the necklace. So let's go ahead and start with one of these oval beads. And then one of these peanut beads. And then a rectangular bead. and then another peanut bead and an oval bead. So I'm going to alternate between the oval beads and the rectangular beads with a Preciosa peanut bead in between each one. Just like that. So I'm going to keep going. put my stopper on. So this is what we have so far and I think it looks really really nice. I love the alternating colors and shapes 
I think it's gorgeous. And like I said before, this is going to be one side of the necklace. The other side will have these beads. Let me just see what it looks like with the bottom portion. So this gives you some idea of how it's going to look. So I'm pretty happy with this strand. Let me move this back out of the way. And let me just see how long it is. It measures about six and a half inches, maybe a little bit more. And this part of the necklace measures about three inches. So that's pretty good. So if I make two of these, I'll have 13 inches worth, plus the bottom portion of the necklace, which is three inches long, equals 16 inches. Plus we're gonna add some jump rings and a lobster claw clasp. So the necklace will end up being a little bit more than 16 inches. And that's kind of what I was shooting for. And I just noticed I need to add another Preciosa bead to this end. This is going to be the top end where the clasp is going to go. So let me just add one more bead there. Let me bring the beads up close now. And now we're going to work on the second strand. So here's another rod. And I'm going to start with one of these pillow beads. And then instead of one, I think what I'm going to do is add two Preciosa beads in between each one of the pillow beads just to make it a little bit different than this strand. So let me add another pillow bead. Two more of these peanut beads. And another pillow bead or etched bead. So now we have three. And now another two. And I think what I want to do now is add one of the oval beads because I want the oval bead to sit relatively low on the chest so it's visible. I don't want it too high up. So now let me go ahead and add two peanut beads. And I'm going to go back to the etched beads. And I think I'll um, add another three of them just like I did in the beginning. So here's my three, and now I'm going to add another oval bead, and that looks really nice so far. Let me continue with the etched beads. So here's what we have so far, and now I have to decide, do I want to add another oval bead or do I just want to continue with the etched beads? So this is a decision I need to make because if I add another oval bead here, I won't have enough room to add three more of these edged beads. But I'm not going to know until I try it, so let me go ahead and try it. And actually it looks like it does work out. So here it is guys, and it's a little bit short, but I think if I add a peanut bead to this end, which is the end that's going to be up against the focal part of the necklace, then I'll have two equal strands. So let me go ahead and put a stopper on this end. Flip it around. And I'll add one more peanut bead to this side. Put my stopper back on. And now as you can see, I have two identical lengths, which is exactly what I want. So now let me go ahead and remove the rest of these beads and we'll take a look at the whole thing. Sometimes you need a clean space in order to see the whole thing. So let me show you what we have so far. So this gives you some idea of how it's going to look, but I've changed my mind again. I think I'm going to flip this strand around so that I have two peanut beads at the top, which will be by the clasp and you really won't see it. And then I'll have one single bead here which will work well because I have a single bead here, so that'll follow the pattern of the two peanut beads in between each bead, if that makes any sense. But anyway, I love the color distribution. I love the purple beads down here, and these purple oval beads pick up the purple from the focal part. And of course, on this side, we have the beautiful bluish and amber tones, which pick up the colors from the dangles. So I think I'm going to go with this, and let me go ahead and get the beading wire. I'm going to be using 49 strand bead alarm wire. 
and it's relatively thick. This is 0 0.024 inches. And the reason I want it thick is because I want the necklace to have a little bit of body, but you can certainly use something thinner if you prefer. Unfortunately, I only had this beading wire in two colors, stainless steel or silver. So I'm gonna go with stainless steel, which is a little bit darker. My preference would have been gold, but I don't have gold in this thickness. But I think this should be okay because I'm gonna be using some wire guardians and uh, crimp bead covers and crimp tubes. So you really won't see it as much. I'm going to cut myself a generous piece. Generally speaking, you want to give yourself at least two inches at each end of your beading wire for the crimping. So for example, if you want an 18 inch necklace, you'll need to cut yourself a piece that's 22 inches long. My necklace is going to be closer to 17 inches. So I think I'm going to go ahead and cut myself a 22 inch piece anyways, just to be on the safe side. It's best to have enough wire than not enough. So here's my beading wire. One of the nice things about Beadalon is that they actually tell you what size crimp tube to use. They usually list it right here on the front. As you can see, it says use crimp bead number two or number three or tube number two or number three, but they also have it in the back. So that comes in really handy. I'm going to be using size number three crimp tube in a copper color because this wire is relatively thick and I don't want to be struggling with a crimp tube that's too small. So there are my two crimp tubes. I have two wire guardians. And here are my two crimp bead covers. Let me go ahead and put a clip at this end so I don't lose the beads. And we're going to start by loading a crimp tube. And now I'm going to thread on the wire guardian. So we're going to go in one end like this. And now you're going to take the tail and go in the other end of your wire guardian like this. And now thread the tail back through the crimp tube. Move everything down like this. I like to close the little legs of my wire guardian with my crimp pliers like this. And you definitely want that wire to sit inside the little channel of your wire guardian. So you want to snug things up. And the other thing you want to try to do guys, I know it's difficult because you can't see it, but you want to try to keep both of these wires separated inside the crimp tube. And now I'm going to go ahead and place the crimp tube inside the first notch, this one right here, which is the deep notch. And that's the one that creates the U shape. So you want to place it inside there. Pull the wire one more time before you crimp down and then go ahead and crimp down. like this and now you want to turn it on its side if you'll notice there are three more notches right here i usually like to pick the one that's in the middle the medium sized notch i'm going to place the crimp tube inside that notch sideways like this and then when you squeeze down it should fold that crimp tube over and now i'm going to switch to the smaller notch and squeeze it a little bit more and this is what you should have and now using some good snippers, you want to get in here real close and cut off the excess, just like that. As long as you've done a good job with crimping, you don't need a tail, guys, okay? I know some of you are probably saying, why isn't she leaving a tail? The main reason I'm not leaving a tail is because it's really hard to fit two of these wires through the peanut bead, okay? The hole is a little bit small. But like I said, as long as you do a good job with your crimping, it shouldn't be a problem to cut the tail off right next to the crimp tube. So now we're going to go ahead and slip on one of these crimp tube covers. Just like that. And I like to use these crimping pliers to close up my crimp tube cover. You want to take your time when you do this, okay? Because you don't want to dent that crimp cover. And I always go around the whole crimp cover because uh, that way I can get a nice round shape. So that looks pretty good. So now that we have this end done, we're going to go ahead and thread the beads. And I'm going to start with this strand first. I'll move this up a little bit so you can see better. So if you have these rods, guys, let me show you a little bit of technique. You want to hold onto this end like this and then very carefully pull the stopper off this end. And now I'm simply going to offload from the rod. And as you can see, I'm grabbing three beads. I'm grabbing two of the peanut beads and the oval bead at the same time and I'm going to load them directly onto my beading wire just like that. 
And the reason I'm able to do that is because the rod holds the beads in perfect alignment so I don't have to struggle looking for the holes of the beads. The only thing that you have to be careful with is that you maintain your patterns. So if you have beading patterns, bead patterns, you want to keep the integrity of your bead patterns. So let me go ahead and load the rest of this rod. As you can see, I've loaded all the beads. I really like how that looks. Now I'm going to load the focal part of the necklace. So let me move this down. Once again, you want to hold on to this end of the rod, remove the stopper, offload the beads. And you can do multiples or you can do one bead at a time. It's up to you. Like I said before, you do have to maintain your bead patterns. You don't want to lose your bead patterns. So let me continue loading these beads and dangles. As you can see, I've loaded the focal part of the necklace and I really love it. I think it's gorgeous. So now I'm going to continue loading the rest of these beads. Let me flip this rod around because I want this end to be up against the focal part of the necklace. So once again, I'm going to hold the rod at this end, take the stopper off this end and load my beads. As you can see, I finished loading the beads. I love how it looks. Now, if you don't work with rods, you really shouldn't crimp one end, okay? Because you want to make sure that your measurements are accurate before you crimp off any of the ends. And since I already knew my measurements because of the rods, I was pretty confident that the necklace was going to be the proper length. And that's why I crimped it off. I hope that makes sense to you. In any case, I'm going to take this to the mirror now before I go any further and before I crimp off this end. And I'm going to hold it up to my chest to make sure that it's exactly what I want. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and it's the perfect length. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this end. So once again, I'm going to thread on a crimp tube. And then my wire guardian going in one end. Bring everything down. And now I'm going to feed the tail through the other end of the wire guardian and the crimp tube as well. Pull the tail to bring everything down closer to the beads. Check to make sure that you don't have any spaces, but you do want it to be fluid. You don't want it too stiff. Once you've taken out the spaces, you want to snug things up. Make sure that everything is up close to the beads. And you want to make sure your wire is not crossed inside that crimp tube. And then you're going to go ahead and place it inside the first notch of your crimp pliers. Squeeze it just like that. Turn it on its side and now place it inside the middle notch of your pliers and fold it over. Switch to the smaller notch and this is what you should have. And now you want to carefully snip off the excess. Slide on the crimp tube cover. And close it up. So now that's done. And now all I have to do is add the clasp. I have a lobster claw clasp and a six millimeter jump ring. Now this necklace doesn't really have a front or a back, so it doesn't matter what side you put it on. And on this side, I'm simply gonna add a jump ring, a six millimeter jump ring. You want to 
make sure you close your jump rings really well. I think this necklace is adorable. And if you were giving it to somebody and you weren't certain of the length, you can always add an extended chain. So here it is, and don't you just love it? I love the beautiful colors. I love that it's asymmetrical. We have the purple and the amber on this side, and we have the beautiful blue and amber on the other side. And to tie the whole thing, we have purple on the bottom, as well as the amber and the teal or bluish colors on the bottom as well. This is a very cute necklace, and as always, I'd like to go ahead and put it on and show you what it looks like. So let me go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back. Well, what do you think of this necklace? It's dainty, isn't it? It looks so different on than when it's on the mat. That's one of the reasons I like to model them for you, so you can get an idea of how they look. And as you can see, even though it has dangles and it's a statement necklace, it's still very dainty. I love the colors. I think the colors are absolutely gorgeous. Plus, it's very whimsical, very feminine, and I love the dragonfly pendant. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I hope you can go out and make your own necklaces. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.